Good morning to you all, all those that are joining us online today for our third Sunday after Trinity Worship online. It's wonderful to welcome you as always. Please can I ask that if you find good use of this service online, that you share it with others on social media, through email, etc., just so that the Word of God is spread around our communities. Our service today will be taken from the Book of Common Prayer, and uh, Hugh and myself will, will lead that service for you. Let's begin with some opening prayers. Beloved in Christ, we are here in the presence of the living God and of the whole company of heaven to offer to him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving that we may know more truly the greatness of his love and that his grace may bear fruit in our lives. We have come to hear and to receive God's holy word, to seek the strengthening power of the Holy Spirit and to pray for ourselves and all mankind that we may be given those things which are necessary for our true well-being. But first let us confess our sins and seek our Father's pardon and peace as we pray. We, we confess, confess to God, God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, that, that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We, we have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins and deliver us from evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and deliver you from sin. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. 
Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Some words now from the Vanity Psalm 95. O come, let us sing unto the Lord, let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and sing loudly unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the deep places of the earth, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Today, if ye will hear his voice, ye shall know his power. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The appointed psalm today is some words from Psalm 107. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures for ever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the mighty waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven, they went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their calamity. They reeled and staggered like drunkards, and were at their wits' end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He made the storm to be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad because they had quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people, and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first reading today, taken from the book of Job, chapter 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkness counsel by works without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know, or who stretched the line upon it, or what were its bases sunk into, or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together, and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy, or who shut the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some words from the Benedictus, now Luke 1. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us, in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our second reading today is taken from the book of the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. But a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll share now the words of the Te Deum Laudamus. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the comforter. Thou art the king of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting son of the father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, Thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. We affirm our faith now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the The Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his His only Son, our Lord, who was was conceived conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. 
Endure thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. O Lord, save the Queen. And give her counsellors wisdom. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And ever more mightily defend us. May clean our hearts, O God. And renew a right spirit within us. And the collects for today. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent us the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy servants, in all dangers and adversities, that surely trusting in thy defence, we may serve thee without fear, through the power of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always what is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, have you ever tried to get away from the storms that we're presented with in life, only to find that we have to go on and on and on? If you can understand this, then what's happened in Mark's Gospel today, then you will be able to identify somewhat. Jesus needed to get away from the crowds 
and we're all tempted aren't we to get away from the crowds but we need to carefully be careful in our consideration of public opinion and walk away when the popular opinion isn't that that is faithful to God's word we need to walk away from the crowd so we can spend time alone with God now Jesus's idea to cross over to the other side marked the first time when he went into Gentile territory the disciples took Jesus abruptly and without notice they might not have been pleased with his plan to include the Gentiles if so their attitude reflects that of the prophet Jonah Christians must be willing to share that gospel and of course their selves with people who are not like them now the Sea of Galilee is the deepest part of the northern Jordan Rift 700 feet below sea level in fact which is surrounded by cliffs and steep mountains many of them are very very high and face great extremities the hot air rises and the cool air falls so the cool air in the higher elevations is always wanting to swap places with the warmer air around near the sea now that causes great waves waves reported to be bigger than 30 foot high and if we look at the map of Israel the sea looks like a large lake but actually from each of the small fishing villages around the coast there and if you're on a, a, swim, um, a fishing boat you will just think it's one big expanse of seawater so to survive in any storm would be a great difficulty the danger on this evening is not moderate but it is deadly today in Mark's gospel the sea represents evil forces that oppose God it also is a boundary between the sea the Jews and the Gentiles even though the sea threatens to undo them Jesus wants to cross over because he wants to spread the good news of the gospel in other places around the kingdom because why the gospel is for everyone not just for us now the storm was upsetting and so was the fact that Jesus was asleep during the storm now we can understand that surely when our friend is sleeping and we really need them to give us some help the disciples wanted Jesus to be awake and alert they wanted him to take control and command the situation to get them all organized they were scared that Jesus would abandon them in this time of crisis the heart of their fear was a lack of faith they felt abandoned by God and by Jesus because there was no control but the real heart of the disciples fear was their failure to recognize the true challenges of faith because faith isn't simple we all know that it must involve doubt it needs to be strengthened it needs us to be people of courage it places a sword into our hands now storms often bring out our true spiritual condition too many of us want faith to be nice neat and simple faith requires hard work so it can't be simple it involves our ability to care for ourselves and to care for others fear often wipes out that faith discipleship is a life of faith a deep faith with a bedrock trust in God in the church and in our lives so when the storms of life occur we come to the truth of just how deep our faith is safety is not the absence of trouble it is the presence of Jesus he has commanded everything he commands over everything even though it doesn't appear that way to us at times the fact that he slept through the storm reflects his human nature the fact that he calmed the storm proves that he is fully God at the same time God sent the storm to teach the disciples a lesson of faith and he often sends trials and problems to us today to learn from those problems and to continue trusting in our faith each of us has a measure of faith that has been given to us by God he wants us to use it to overcome fear because fear tells us to expect the worst faith tells us that God is in control and he will carry us on the stormy seas 
He will look after us when we need him most. Jesus came so he could reach out to the social outcasts, so that he could heal the hurting of today, so that he could care a little for those who are embarrassed, so that he can be a bridegroom who is running out of wine at the wedding. Jesus came to be all that for us, so we need to have faith and put trust in him, even in the darkest times of the storms of life. Now, sometimes we are like the disciples in the story today. We are in the midst of those storms in life. Look around us with the COVID-19 pandemic. There's lots of storms going on. People are feeling anxious. People are feeling worried. People are feeling afraid. But in those storms of life, Jesus is there. God is around us with his spirit. One night a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes from his life. For each scene he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand. He noticed that many times along the path of his life there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in his life. This really bothered him and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way along. But I've noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there is only one set of footprints and I don't understand why when I needed you most you weren't there. The Lord replied, my son, my precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During the times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. There are always storms in life on the horizon. We need to have faith to put trust in God and be confident in Jesus Christ, who will claim and calm the storm before it arrives. We need to remember those words of that famous hymn, don't we? Will your anchor hold? We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep, in the Saviour's love. Now God equips us for service in the storms of life. We are guided through the storms by the Bible. It is our compass. If we spend time studying God's word, we will find hope. We will find encouragement and we will find strength. All the strength that we need to get through the storms of life. Amen.
come now with our prayers of intercession for today. Let us pray. Mighty God, when the waves of life threaten to overwhelm us, forgive us if we blame you or others for our troubles. Teach us to find you in the storms of life and give us the faith those early disciples lacked to always believe that you will bring calm and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, we pray for your church, your families here in this ministry area of Tawi Isav. We ask for your blessing on our work as we seek to create a church and a community that welcomes visitors and strangers, that provides a refuge for those who are threatened or alone, a refuge from life's troubled waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, as we see the brokenness of our world, we pray for healing among the nations, for fair shares of the coronavirus vaccines, for food where there is hunger, for freedom where there is oppression, for joy where there is pain, that your love may bring peace to all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we thank you for the joy of human love and for those among whom we live and work. We especially pray for those among our friends and families who do not know you or whose faith has been shaken. Help them to see that we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, when our lives feel chaotic and desolate because of illness or sorrow, help us to hear your holy word, for by that word Jesus calmed the storm, and by it he healed and made people whole. We pray for those who have requested prayers this day. Help them to triumph over the Goliaths, and help them to put their trust in you, and in the knowledge and skills of the doctors and nurses who are treating them at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, for members of our families who have died and whose anniversary we recall at this time. Help us to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of the church family around us until we are reunited once more in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer, and in a moment of stillness and quietness, we bring to God the prayers of our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, help us to know that the one who calmed the waves on the Sea of Galilee is present with us each and every day, that he cares for us and can calm the waves in our lives. Help us to trust more fully and more deeply in you and in all that we are involved with in the days to come. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. So we come now with our closing prayers. O God, whose beauty is beyond our imagining and whose power we cannot comprehend, show us your glory as far as we can grasp it and shield us from knowing more than we can bear until we may look upon you without fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you, with those you love and with those you pray for, today and always. Amen. Amen.